Nvidia's resizable bar support kind of sucks, guys, because it's not that they don't have it, it's that they just don't add it to more games, at least not very quickly. When AMD came out with their Smart Access Memory, which was clearly at least mostly just resizable bar, Nvidia eventually responded and did actually add it to their drivers and there were a number of supported games at launch, but they said that unlike AMD, where you can just turn it off and on and any game you're using will then apply it, whether it helps performance or hurts performance or does nothing, Nvidia wanted to make this a little bit more of a gated and uh, you know curated experience, I guess we could call it, but that means that you have to wait for Nvidia to add it to your game. And if you're on an older game, maybe they'll never get around to it, or even a newer game, like Forza Horizon 5 that I'm showing here, which is getting massive performance gains from AMD when you enable smart access memory. So I was shocked that Nvidia didn't officially support resizable bar in this game. But you can add it unofficially, because apparently Nvidia was too lazy, and I can guarantee you the performance is better here, even the 1% lows. Like, there's no reason not to enable this. It's just a good deal to just download free performance. A great deal along the lines of my sponsor here. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I don't do a lot of paid promotion stuff, but I do always highlight good deals on tech-related products. And today those two things happen to line up. I got a sponsorship opportunity here from Atlas VPN, $1.99 per month for three years of VPN service. And there's a link in my description, so if you're gonna do this, go click that one, the one in my description. That makes me look good. Anyway, but why would you want a VPN service and what are you getting for $1.99 per month? Well, I could highlight the like marketing materials, but I actually pulled this slide from an independent review over at Tech Radar, and they highlight one of the main reasons why a lot of people want one of these is unlock region locked content. In, but you also get like increased security, privacy, that kind of stuff. But we could unblock things like Amazon Prime Video, BBC iPlayer, Disney Plus that have region locked content, but you only want to do that if you're not going to slow it down by going through the VPN server. So they also highlighted the excellent download speeds, exceptional affordability, unlimited simultaneous connections, and this also is available on all sorts of devices, not just PC, and it's it's $1.99 per month. It's a great deal. Let's go back to our scheduled programming. Okay, so here's the actual numbers. When we've enabled resizable bar, we gain some significant performance. And what I, I've tested out three things here. This was the resizable bar off, and then I turned it on using Nvidia's official methods, which relies on them in actually enabling it in the game, even though you've turned everything on. And then there's the way that you can unofficially add it in, which I'll show you here in just a second. And with it unofficially added in here, you can see that we're getting some sizable performance gains. It's not anything absolutely mind-blowing, but it's free performance. And why isn't Nvidia giving it to us? Well, first of all, how do you even turn this thing on? Well, regardless of whether you're gonna do the official stuff or the uh, unofficial stuff, you first need to start with the official way of, of, of installing it. So first of all, you need compatible CPU, motherboard, and GPU. And in addition to that, you need a compatible BIOS on that motherboard and a compatible vBIOS on your NVIDIA GPU. And your GPU may or may not have come with one, especially if it launched before NVIDIA added resizable bar support. So you'll need to look into some of those details. This slide over here I've taken directly from uh, NVIDIA's website. So you'll need to read into some more details on exactly which things are supported. Now, enabling it in your motherboard, once you have a compatible motherboard and BIOS, is it looks something like this. You have to go to the resize bar support and enable it. On my motherboard, it actually says auto. In, it has disabled or auto, so auto would be equivalent to enabling it. It just detects if your other uh, hardware is compatible. The other thing that you need to do um, is actually then double check that it really enabled. And here's how you do that. You open up your NVIDIA control panel, you click on system information, and that opens up this screen where you can check if the resizable bar says yes. If it says yes, it's enabled. If it says no, it's still not enabled. I had to uh, actually turn it off and on again in my motherboard and restart the computer, but I think that might be because I'm constantly switching in and out GPUs for testing, so that might have confused it because <laughs> not every GPU that I switch in has support. Now, let's say you want to add it in unofficially to a game like Forza Horizon 5. How do you do that? Well, since NVIDIA is too lazy to do it, you have to download NVIDIA Profile Inspector. Wrong button, sorry. 
you have to download the NVIDIA Profile Inspector, and then you, you can get that off GitHub. I could probably put a link in my description. It's a pretty useful program. A lot of you might already have it. Anyway, uh, you type in the name of the game that you want to apply it to in the top left corner, and then you need to turn on the unknown settings, or else they'll be hidden. And you do that with the little button up, uh, you know, up, up. I keep clicking things, but this isn't the real program. It's just a Google slide. <laughs> up there, my mouse pointer is kind of flying around it. That's the show hidden stuff. Now, under the unknown settings, you just need to find Ufuba, Ufub, and Ufoof. <laughs> okay. Uh, once you find those, they'll have like, currently they're showing 19 profiles because those are the 19 games that NVIDIA has actually added resizable bar support for. So what you're doing here is you then click over here on the drop down menu and you select the one that says, you know, Battlefield 5, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, all these games that have resizable bar support. You click that on the drop down menu and then you go up here and you click apply settings and you do that in all three places here. And now you will have resizable bar support added to whichever game you had selected up here. Now, you might want to turn it off if you find out that this actually hurts performance. And you do that using the symbol next to these on the far right. You click that and it reverts back to the original NVIDIA official settings. Because remember, NVIDIA is saying the reason they haven't added this to other games is that they, you know, they're not, they can't guarantee that it increased performance. Well, again, Forza Horizon 5 is a pretty major game that has been pretty widely advertised as having great uh, SAM support from AMD. So why have you not looked into this, NVIDIA? Do you just not care? Did you forget about this? Is this just trying to be feature competitive with AMD on paper and you forgot about it? I don't know, man. Anyway, if you have an AMD card, all you have to do after enabling it in the motherboard is just click Enabled on your Performance Tuning tab in your AMD software. And you can disable it anytime you want right here without having to go into your BIOS again, which is really nice. AMD is doing this the right way. Anyway, let's get back to the actual results. And we're going to compare, did we gain any performance? We're also going to compare it to smart access memory from AMD on a very similar GPU. This is the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte I have here. And this is the gigabyte Eagle version running at completely stock settings other than the resizable bar being enabled. And then I compare it against my RX 6800 XT which gained a lot more performance in this game. That's the Asus Tough model, by the way. And again, I'm running it at its default settings, which might have a tiny factory overclock. I think it's not much. Anyway, so I'm running both cards just the way they get shipped to you in the mail, other than turning on resizable bar or smart access memory. And if you saw the size of those bars, you probably noticed, yeah, it's a much larger percentage increase for AMD. So even after adding it unofficially to this game, AMD did gain more performance. I mean, almost 30% is insane. It's also an outlier. Most games aren't gaining that much performance, but it's nice to have the uh, performance gain that you can get, uh, even from the 3080 12 gigabyte here. By the way, the 12 gigabyte of the 3080 does outperform the 10 gigabyte version, not just on VRAM, it actually has more CUDA cores and is more similar to a 3080 Ti really than it is to a 3080 10 gigabyte. Anyway. So uh, if we actually look at the, just the absolute frame rates, we see that AMD gets the, the clear win here, even with the unofficial resizable bar support added in from NVIDIA, but it was a lot worse when they didn't have that. This is just a, a good AMD title, I guess, here. Now, both cards are getting very good performance um, and benefiting a lot from resizable bar. Let's go ahead and take a look at some more games. So Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the ones on NVIDIA's official support list. So I did not have to do any of the weird tweaking. And we see some very modest gains here. Um, but honestly, that's not too far out of line from what I saw uh, from AMD on my RX 6800 XT with smart access memory. Although the gains do seem a little bit better, especially at 1440p and 1080p. If we look at this percentage-wise, it is fairly close, although we do see, again, especially at 1440p, whoops, at 1440p and 1080p, AMD having a, a few percent better gain. But which card actually performs better with SAM or rebar on? Well, at 4K, it's a definite win for the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte, but at 1440p, it's basically a tie, but AMD is winning. And at 1080p, 
it's definitely a win for AMD, although both cards are performing so well, I would challenge you to actually spot the difference with the human eye. <laughs> Now, jumping into Total War Warhammer 3, which is not one of the official supported games, we basically see no difference. And on the RX 6800 XT, which doesn't need an official game support list, we basically see no difference. So this is a title just representing, you know, some games just don't seem to care about resizable bar or smart access memory. As percentages, they're they're basically 100%, like of the original performance, that we didn't see a change here. Now, jumping in to who actually won, <laughs> it does look like at 4K, the uh, NVIDIA GPU was definitely winning, although it's neither one of them does very well at 4K Ultra. This game needs some serious work on optimization, in my opinion. Uh, at 1440p and 1080p, it was basically a tie, although I guess um, AMD got a bit of a win at 1080p. Okay, Horizon Zero Dawn is another one of the games on NVIDIA's official support list, and we do see some gains here, especially at 1080p and 1440p as well. Small gain at 4K. So this is definitely a game where, where it, it's, it's worth turning resizable bar on. Now, the 6800 XT from AMD also saw similar percentage gains, and so let's jump into the percentages. So it does look like AMD definitely benefited more, although at 1080p, it's almost a tie. They're both right around a 10% gain, although you know AMD was still at around a 10% gain at 1440p with, uh, with Nvidia only getting about a 6.2% gain there. And which card actually wins with the resizable bar enabled in absolute frame rate? It's AMD at 4K, 1440p, and 1080p. And, uh, you know, while both of them are performing well, it's, it's a sizable enough margin that, yeah, it is a clear win for AMD here. Okay, now Red Dead Redemption 2. This is a weird one, okay? It looks like it had a massive performance gain at 1080p. And it did, but the game was kind of glitching out without resizable bar on. I can probably splice in some footage here, uh, and this was repeatable. When I didn't have resizable bar enabled, the GPU failed to fully utilize during a particular section of the benchmark. And this happened at all resolutions, but it impacted the performance the most on something like 1080p, where it should be going over 100 FPS and it can't because of whatever's going on here. Now, I restarted the computer multiple times and the game, and I, again, ran the game on my AMD hardware and did not have this issue. So there's something weird going on here. Now, it's possible that if I used a different driver for the 3080 that this wouldn't happen. Maybe this is just a driver issue, but, to be fair to both AMD and NVIDIA, I'm just using their latest drivers, and that's the test that they get. It's weird, though, that enabling resizable bar seems to fix this problem for NVIDIA. So, yeah, this is just kind of strange. I guess some, some kind of weird driver issue for NVIDIA here. Now, on the 6800 XT, we did see performance gains. Again, not as dramatic, especially at 1080p, but that's because the card was actually working properly when I didn't have SAM enabled, as well as when I had it enabled. <laughs> now, if we look at this with the max preset percentage, uh, like, th they all gained. The NVIDIA percentage gains are exaggerated, because of all those issues I already described. So I think let's just go ahead and take a look at the actual gameplay performance. And it, once again, it's basically a tie, although with a small win for NVIDIA at 4K uh, and a and tiny win at 1440p and a tiny win for AMD at 1080p, it, it's basically the same. It's the same picture, guys, okay? <laughs> now, 
I have a lot of overall thoughts, and I'll talk to you about that while I leave up a, a, a huge thank you to channel members. I don't talk about you guys enough. I also feel like I could do a little bit more to support you guys uh, on my uh, members-only content. Maybe I could upload more side-by-sides. Maybe I could talk about you know games that I like. Do you guys have questions for me? I'll post something on the members feed. Uh, this helps me buy things like the RTX 3080 that I used in this video. Anyway, feel free to hit the join button down there if you want to support the channel directly financially. Anyway, so what's, what, what's, what are my final thoughts here? Overall, I like the resizable bar. It's nice to just turn it on and get better performance in some games. But the frustrating thing here is I understand NVIDIA's idea of wanting it to only be a positive so that they filter out games where it doesn't work. The problem is they need to actually get the ball rolling. And when a game gets like a day zero driver, then that should include the resize bar enabling if they've tested that that game does benefit from resizable bar. And if they've been able to develop a graphics driver for that, then they should be able to do that. Like, I don't see why this is something that they couldn't do fairly easily. And if they don't want to get the ball rolling on that, then what they need to do is take what I just had to do in the NVIDIA inspector panel and move that into just the normal NVIDIA control panel. Remember it has that resizable bar, yes, no indicator? Make that a clickable switch on game profiles so that you can just enable it or disable it in a game like you do in NVIDIA inspector and not having to do it um, through NVIDIA inspector which is just kind of silly. So they could just hide it in a menu for people who know what they're doing and want to play around with it. In general, it's weird to me that AMD gets better gains using this. Now, I don't know why that would be the case. I, I could speculate on a few possibilities, but frankly, it's a bit over my pay grade. Uh, one possibility is that smart access memory is doing more than just enabling resizable bar. And that's a very real possibility. It might be resizable bar plus some other optimizations between the CPU, GPU, RAM, whatever it's doing. I don't know. Um, another possibility is maybe just that for some reason, AMD's architecture is more bottlenecked by these issues than AMD's is. And I don't know why that would be the case, but maybe something about their design just inherently lends itself to being more bottlenecked by these situations so they gain more performance um, by removing that bottleneck. Because theoretically what Resizable Bar is doing is just changing the way that the CPU can address the VRAM on the GPU. Uh, through the PCIe lane, right? I, I think it's instead of just as a 256 megabyte block and having to switch, and I don't know the exact details on that, I don't program this stuff, it allows it to just arbitrarily address whatever amount of the VRAM it wants all at once. Apparently I have an alarm ringing, guys. Maybe that's my sign to end the video. It is getting fairly long here. Anyway, what do you guys think about all this? Let me know in the comments section, and I hope you have an excellent day.